this short video, I want to show you my top five favorite glute and outer thigh sketches. They're all going to be on the floor, but we're first going to do two sun salutations just to warm ourselves up a little bit. Um, the more sun salutations you do, the warmer you are, the better. So if you can do more than just two, that's perfect. Or if you want to do this after a run, for example, or after any other type of exercise, dancing around the kitchen, then that's perfect. Because the warmer you are, the more comfortable it is for you and the less risk there is of injury or all the stretching. These stretches are perfect for runners and cyclists and also for everyone who sits too much, so pretty much for everyone. Um, and I really love them, even though it's a love hate relationship, some of them are very intense. Okay, well, let's get going. We're going to stand, start at the top of our mat, either feet together or feet hip width apart, but wherever we are. We're going to raise our toes, spread them wide, and then one at a time. And then, if you want, raising our heels gently and placing them down, nice firm grounding. Inhale, engage our perineum, pelvic floor, glutes and abdominals, nice firm middle, shoulders up, back and down, palms face forward, almost pulling us by the top of our head, looking forward, and chin slightly tucked. Inhale, arms go up. Exhale, we're engaging the crawling or folding on hands either side of the feet. Knees bend slightly or could also come to half forward fold. On the inhale, we're all coming into half forward fold, hands to chin or fingertips to mat. Exhale, hands down, stepping back with the right foot, followed by the left foot, coming into a plank. Inhaling here, exhale, knees down, chest down, chin down. Inhale, we're sliding forward into a cobra, hand to fingertips, pointing them back. Elbows into the body, shoulder blades together, shoulder pulling down, away from the ears. Exhale, tucking the toes and pushing back. Maybe stepping the feet in a little bit, in and down your dog. Pressing into whole palm, middle fingers pointing forward, hands shoulder width apart. Ears away from the shoulders. Shoulder blades pulling slightly apart, gauging the core, bending the knees if you have to, if you have to or want to, to get a flat back. Feet are pointing forward, feet hip width apart, and we're pulling our heels towards the mat to wake up our hamstrings and calves. Don't have to touch the ground, mind on. Breathing here for another moment. And with the next inhale, we can step forward with the right foot. Forward by the left foot on the exhale. Inhale, half forward, fold hands to shins or fingertips to mat. Exhale, folding down. Inhale, engaging the core or coming up. Exhale, hands to the center. We are going to do the same thing on the other side, and I'm going to give you an option to make it a bit more vigorous in case you want to make it a bit stronger. That doesn't mean it's better or worse, it's just different. Okay, let's do this. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, we're folding down. Inhale, half fold, fold. Hands, chin, fingertips, and mat. Exhale, hands down. Either you step back with the left, followed by the right into plank, and then come down knees, chest, chin, sliding into cobra. Or from our forward fold. Exhaling here, and bending the knees now, and jumping back into a plank. Staying plank, inhale, and exhale, we're rocking forward onto our toes, coming down, chaturanga. Inhale, we're coming into an upward facing dog. Hands and back of the feet are the only things that touch the ground. And exhale, we're all meeting in downward dog, stepping in the feet if we want. Breathing here. And either with the next inhale, we're setting forward with the left, followed by the right, or bending the knees, and exhale, we're jumping forward. Inhale, half forward, forward, hands to shins, or fingertips to mat. Full forward, forward, falling down. And inhale, we're coming up. Exhale, hands to heart center. 
Well done, everyone. The first of our outer thigh and glute stretches is going to be pigeon pose. And we're going to get there from down dog, so we're moving through one vinyasa. So standing at the front of the mat again. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, engaging the core, folding down. Inhale, half, walk forward. Exhale, stepping back into plank, whichever foot you want to step back with. Inhaling here and exhale, coming down, knees, chest, chin, however you want to do it. Inhale, sliding forward into cobra. Exhale, tucking the toes, we're pushing back into a down dog. We're starting with the right leg forward, so inhale, lifting the right leg up. Exhale, bring the right leg in, and we're turning it around so that the left foot is behind the left hand and the right knee is behind the right hand. We're dropping the back knee. And if you want, you can walk that back foot back. The more the distance between the back foot and the front leg, the more intense it is going to be. So you can make it, it just work with yourself, whatever you want to do. Also, the more parallel your shin, the front shin, is to the front edge of your mat, the straighter it is, so to speak, the more intense it is going to be. So if you find it's unbearable, you can just bring that foot in. And that's going to take a lot of the intensity out. Work with your body, with what feels good to you today. It doesn't matter what others do or what you did last week. So, and then you can either stay here in this pigeon pose, or if you wanted, you could come down onto your forearms, or if you want to go a little bit further, you could lie down. But any of those options are as valid as the next. So do what you want to do. For a meal, let's stay there for a few moments. If you're coming down to lie down, you could use your hands as a pillow. What you want to do is you want to square your hips, so your shoulders and your hips as parallel to that front of your mat. Maybe have a bit of a play around, moving your hips, how you feel that glute, that thigh stretch the most, and then staying there. Where all our bodies are different, so what makes me feel the stretch and works for me might not work for you. Okay, wherever you are, if you're we're lying down, come onto your forearms. If you're on your forearms, we're now going to come onto your hands. Our hands, we're going to tuck that back foot, lift that knee, and we're going to come back into a downward dog. One breath here, and then inhale, we're lifting the left leg. And then play again, bending the knee in, placing the left foot behind the right hand and the left knee behind the left hand. Actually, I might have gotten that wrong at the, on the other side, but I think you get my gist. And coming here, um, we make again, if you want to walk that back foot back a little bit and tucking the toes. Again, if this is too intense, bring your foot in a little bit. Do whatever feels good to you. One other thing you could do if you have a block is bring that block under your glutes so you can under your thigh to rest there. And then staying here, coming down onto your forearms or coming down onto your arm. And again, none of these versions are better or worse than the previous one, they're just different. Stay where we are. Lying down, let's come onto our forearms. If you're on forearms, let's come onto our hands. And we can just drop onto our left glute now and come up seated. The next pose we're going to do is called firewall pose, or some people also call it double pigeon. So, very similar to what we just did. We're going to start with the right leg on top because we just did the left one. And here again, if you have a block, that could be quite useful. And what we're doing is we're sitting on a mat and we're going to bring, uh, it's almost like we're sitting cross-legged, but the leg is a bit more, if the shin is again parallel to the front of your mat. A bit more parallel here. 
and then we're going to bring that other knee, the other foot on top of the knee, of the other leg, and the shins are going to be stuck, stacked up like firewood or fireworks. And here, the more that top foot, so my right leg is on top right now, the more that right foot is coming over the knee or on the knee, the more intense the stretch is going to be in the right glute. So if you're finding that really un unpleasant, the foot on the knee, you could also bring it in a little bit. So move with whatever you, with your body again. Also, if there is a big gap between the right knee, the top knee, and the bottom foot, the left foot, you could also place a block between there. Great version. And if you don't have a block, a cushion, a rolled up blanket, anything will work. You can sit here. You could also, if you wanted, fold forward. Again, let's try to keep our back flat as we fold. So this is it's great. We can come down a bit more. We don't want to do this where we scrunch our shoulders up. And you'll feel the stretch quite, I feel it quite intensely at least in my right glute here. Nice one more breath here. Inhale, exhale, next inhale, gently come up. You can also sit up tall the entire time. And then let's do the other side. So now the right leg is on the floor. And it's sort of, it's, um, it's straight in front of us. And we stack the left foot on top again, moving it around depending on what's comfortable for you. And if you want to use your block, you can use your block here. And then we're going to either sit here nice and tall, or we're going to see if we can fold down here as well. Feeling that stretch and trying to keep both sit bones in contact with the ground the whole time. And inhale, pressing into the hands or gently coming up. Stretch our legs out and maybe release them. Lovely. We're going to have, we're having three more poses. So number three is cow face. I've got no idea why this is called cow face, um, to be honest. It's similar to what we just did, but I guess a, um, intensified version to file up pose so if file up pose was great for you and you're like i'm fine with that today then stay there for cow face let's start with our um left leg on on the ground so here we're bending our knee in the left foot is very close to our right glute or almost it's touching my glute unless you can see this there you go and the left knee is in the middle of my, sort of right in front of me. Now I'm going to bring that right knee on top. I'm going to try, try, try to stack my knees on top of each other. And you can see that there is a gap here and that my right knee is a little bit to the side. So that's totally fine. If this is the pose you can do, that it's quite a bit over the side, that's also fine. And again, you could use a block to place your right foot on to have both feet in contact with the ground, just working with yourself. And also one thing here is, you want to be sure that both your sit bones, like your glutes, that both sides of your glutes, both bum cheeks, are in touch with the ground. Because I can really yank my right foot close to my side here, but if I do that, you can see that my right glute is lifting off, and we don't want that. I quite like to put my hands on my feet here to keep them in, in place a little bit. And just sit here for the for another version of the full version of cow face, you would bind your hands behind our backs, but we haven't warmed up our shoulders, so let's just stay here today. And you can either stay here, or you can also try and fold forward. Again, really strong stretch now in the top legs and my right glutes. Especially when you fold forward, that stretch intensifies. Okay, inhale, let's press up if you were 
fold them down and come up. Let's do the same thing on the other side. So again, your left knee, uh, now our right knee is on the bottom, so the right knee is um, central. The right foot, is, uh, right knee is bent, so that the right foot is right at my left foot. Now I'm going to cross my left leg over, and this is one thing that generally in yoga, generally in life, whether you're right-handed or left-handed, like one side of your body is stronger, one side of your body is weaker, one side of your body is more or less tight. So I can really feel, you can see that here the gap is a lot bigger between my knees and the knees a bit more to the side. And that's totally normal if you notice that there's differences between doing poses on different sides. So what we can do, again, we place that block there under your right foot. Or we can try to do it without that block, holding our feet in place, both glutes in contact, both bum cheeks in contact with the ground. We can either sit here or we can try and fold forward. Sitting here, feeling that stretch in the left foot now and left outer thigh. Inhale, pushing into the ground and walking up. Let's uncross our legs, stretch them out and shake them out. Lovely. Okay, the next one is a <laughs> um, slightly intensified version of what we've been doing. There's various versions of doing this. Um, I'll show you the different stages. The pose is half lord of the fish. I love that name. And you can either sit here, this is um, the, the end pose, this half lord of the fish. And all these poses along the way are whatever you want them to be. So you can either sit here, so my right leg is bent into my body. You can sit here hugging your right knee with your left arm, twisting a little bit. And if you want to bring your right hand behind you, looking over your shoulder, your left leg is straight. Okay, so that's one version. If you're like, okay, that was good, but I think I'd like to try something a bit more, we're going to cross our right foot over the left thigh now. We're going to hug it in here. Again, right hand behind us. And the left toes, the left foot is flexed, so the left leg is doing yoga as well. Okay, if you're thinking that was great, but Maybe a bit more. We're going to bend that left leg now. So a little bit like cow face, what we just did, just with the right foot on the ground outside. I'm going to sit here, again, hugging our right knee, right knee with our left arm and twisting over. You will feel a stretch in your shoulder here as well. Okay, if you find but you could go a little further. You can now try to bring your left upper arm on the outside of that right leg and maybe grab that foot and with your foot stepping on your fingers and looking over. And this is half lord of the fish. Final pose. forward and releasing. Any of these further steps are optional, so do what feels good to you. So on the other side, so our right leg is straight, our left <laughs> leg is bent, and we're going to hug our left leg with our right arm, left hand behind us. I'm sitting here, looking over our shoulder, feeling that twist in our shoulder. Okay, I'm going to let go, and we're going to see if you want crossing that left foot over the right thigh. Again, hugging our leg with our arm and looking over. Good. 
Great. If you want to go further, let me see that twist. So just bring that, <laughs> that right leg in now. Again, a bit like cow face, but with the left foot on the floor. And hug our left knee with our right arm, sitting nice and tall and twisting over. Now you might start to feel, I don't know, maybe whenever you feel that stretch, but you're feeling that stretch in the outer thigh. And if you want to try going a bit further, bringing that upper arm, the left upper arm outside the right, no, the right upper arm outside the left leg. Sorry, I'm hopeless with left and right. And stepping on the fingers and stretching here. If you don't want to do this, don't do it. It's totally fine. Just showing you all the options. And Looking forward, releasing and coming out. You may be shaking our legs one more time. Let's be sitting with our legs up, then we're going to lie on our backs for the final pose, pose number five, reclining pigeon. Really easy, really lovely to do the stretch. So for that, we're going to bend our knees, feet on the floor, we're going to cross one. So I lifted my right leg off the floor and went to cross it over so that my right shin is on my left thigh, the right foot is sort of poking out over the other side. If you want, you can stay here, this is fine. Maybe mentally or even with the hand pushing that right knee away from you. If you want, you can bend your, or lift your left foot off the ground. You could stay here intensifying it already. If you want, you can go through with the right hand between your thighs and the left hand outside of the left thigh. And you could grasp, hold behind your left thigh. If you want to go a bit more, you could grab around your shin. I'm pulling, here you'll be pulling your left leg into your body. But whatever you do, try not to round your back too much. Nice flat back. And staying wherever you are for however long you want. Stay for more breath while we're showing while I'm showing this. And then letting go of that interlace. Bring that left foot down to the ground, right foot down to the ground, other side. Lifting the left leg off the ground, crossing over, shin just above the ankle, the left leg is on the right thigh, left foot is on the other side. Feet are staying here, nice and relaxed. Or lifting up that right leg mentally or even with the hand, pushing that left knee away if you want. Or if you want, we're going to grab behind our right thigh, lying here. Or going around the shin, whatever feels good to you. Maybe pulling that leg in a little bit more. Do what feels right to you right now. And we're going to let go, lower our right foot onto the ground, release the left leg, left foot. We're going to bring our hands behind our shin, our right arm behind our knees. We rock up to come to seated. So hopefully your glutes and your outer thighs are feeling a bit more nimble, a bit stretched. These are fantastic, as I said, for runners, for cyclists. And I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you had fun, and I'll see you soon.